Greetings everyone, and today I'm checking out what has to be the longest full frame super zoom lens ever made, the new Nikon 28-400mm f4-f8 to F8 VR. It is only for their Z mount mirrorless camera system and it costs £1400 here in the UK or $1300 in the US before sales tax. I would like to thank Nikon UK for loaning me a sample of this lens for a couple of weeks for testing and so quickly, although as usual this is a totally independent review. It's ages since I've tested a good super zoom lens and this one really has to take the crown, well, for its over 14 times zoom range anyway, just look at this. 28mm is a nice moderately wide angle to start from, but being able to zoom into 400mm is just incredible, that's enough for getting good pictures of the moon or wildlife photography, this lens really does cover just about everything so it could be perfect for travel or holiday photography, a nice option if you want to keep your camera kit bag simple. The disadvantages of super zoom lenses are always the same, they normally offer lower image sharpness and general image quality and a narrower maximum aperture, and the f4 to f8 maximum aperture this lens has to work with is a bit darker than usual, it's not going to be a great lens for working in darker situations or stopping action, still that's simply the price you pay for getting a giant zoom range like this packed all into one lens. With a brighter aperture, the thing would have had to have been physically enormous. The lens features its own optical image stabilisation, which was a good idea from Nikon because the in-body stabilisation most cameras have within them isn't very effective at long telephoto ranges. Here's some footage at 400mm with the lens's stabilisation or VR turned off and now turned on. Nikon deserve a pat on the back here in my opinion because it's doing a great job, I was shooting this footage at the top of a cliff on a windy day and it's turned out really good. That stabilisation is incredibly important for getting sharper still images and better handheld video, although it does jerk just a little bit now and then. When it comes to build quality, the first thing that strikes you is that the lens is obviously quite big, unsurprising considering what it's doing. However, at 725 grams or well under 2 pounds, it's weighty but not too heavy. It's made of plastic but is built on a metal lens mount with some light weather sealing. Nikon say that this lens is dust and drip resistant but doesn't make any big claims about its weather sealing so try not to get it wet. The lens doesn't have many controls here, at the rear there's one of Nikon's customizable control rings which can be set in your camera to perform all kinds of different functions, it turns smoothly and also works as a manual focus ring which can be set to work in a linear or non-linear manner. Here you can see that the manual focus response is quite smooth and you can also see that the lens displays impressively little focus breathing whether you're zoomed in or zoomed out, that is a really pleasant surprise. The lens's autofocus system is quiet, accurate and fairly quick, although when you're shooting with any lens as dark as f8 you can't expect the fastest performance in the world. Next comes the very broad rubberized zoom ring and Nikon have done a good job here too, they have gotten its tension just right, it's smooth and even enough to turn without any stickiness, handy for video makers but it's stiff enough not to fall under its own weight, so Nikon have clearly put some thought into this thing's design. The lens is not parfocal by the way, not that I was expecting it to be so, but the focus system does adjust itself quite effectively as you zoom in and out to try and get you the most consistent focus possible. The lens has a 77mm filter thread and comes with this rather strange bowl shaped hood which just looks kind of silly and probably won't be very effective, overall though the build quality is fine and the way it handles is excellent with great electronics and a zoom ring that works beautifully. Alright, let's move on and look at image quality now, I'll be testing it on my trusty Nikon Z7 with its 45 megapixel full frame sensor, in camera corrections are turned on for this test. At 28mm and f4 we see brilliant sharpness and contrast in the middle of the image, corner image quality is somewhat soft though. 
At f5.6 we get a touch more brightness and contrast in those corners, at f8 and f11 there are further tiny improvements leading to decent sharpness in the corners, but we see some ghosting and colour fringing on contrasting edges here. Let's zoom in a bit to 85mm, the maximum aperture has now darkened to f6. The middle of the image is still looking fantastically sharp, although contrast isn't quite as good as at wider angles. The corner image quality is still softer, but not quite as bad as it was at 28mm. Stop down to f8 for, again, just a tiny improvement in corner image quality, and that's as sharp as the image gets at 85mm. Stopping down yields no further improvements. Let's zoom in again, this time to 200mm, where the maximum aperture has now darkened to f8, quite dark actually for any lens at 200mm. Anyway, the middle of the image is still looking nice and sharp here, although contrast is just good. Same story as before in the image corners though, they are looking a little soft but not too bad. Stop down to f11 for a small improvement in those corners, but stop down any further and the lens will just get softer due to diffraction. Finally, let's zoom all the way into 400mm. At f8, the image in the middle is finally looking a little softer than before, but it's still acceptably sharp to be honest, although it doesn't get any sharper if you stop down the aperture from here. The contrast is just okay. And the corner image quality? Surprisingly consistent. Once again, it's a little softer than the middle, but I was actually expecting worse. Here's f11 if you're interested, no real improvement as you can see. Alright, well, considering we're working on a 45 megapixel sensor here, and the lens has a 14 times zoom range, I'm actually quite pleased with these results as they are remarkably consistent. We always get very good sharpness in the middle of your images, and at least workable sharpness in the corners, although they never look great. Oh, and the more you zoom in, the less contrast you will see. Still, I was braced for a worse performance than this, so for a super zoom lens of this magnitude, I'm honestly quite pleased. Alright, let's bypass any in-camera corrections by shooting in RAW, and look at distortion and vignetting. At 28mm, unsurprisingly, we see heavy barrel distortion and a lot of darkness in the corners at f4. Stopping down to f5.6, f8, then f11 yields much more brightness in the corners. Zoom into 50mm and that distortion straightens out. At 100mm, that distortion flips into pincushion distortion, although it's not quite as strong as I was expecting. Zoom all the way into 400mm and, unusually, that distortion straightens out again, although vignetting is still strong at the maximum aperture of f8. Stop down to f11 or f16 and those corners brighten up again. What a roller coaster ride we've seen here! Alright, well, let's look at close up image quality, and if you want to shoot close, you have two options here. Firstly, if you zoom in, then close up image quality is just okay at f8. Stop down to f11 though to see very good close up image sharpness emerging. Well, that's one option, but for the closest possible images, zoom out to 28mm. It's awkward to shoot so close at 28mm, but you'll be rewarded with closer pictures and even sharper close up quality, even at f4. Stop down to f5.6 and any colour fringing that was present has gone too. Either way, this is a good lens for close up shooting. Alright, how well does this lens work against bright light? At the widest angles we get small flecks of flaring, but nothing serious at all. As you zoom in more and more, you start seeing just a slight increase in flaring, but generally, contrast is still very well under control with this lens, which is great to see. And finally, bokeh. Despite its huge telephoto ability, this is not the best lens for getting out of focus backgrounds due to its dark maximum aperture. The quality of those backgrounds is just average here, there's nothing deeply offensive going on, but bokeh is not the smoothest I've ever seen. Overall, well, I mostly had quite warm feelings about this lens, although obviously it's not for everyone. On the one hand, it was fun to test out, and I was actually quite pleased with its image quality, although of course some of the usual super zoom limitations are here, especially with softness in image corners. 
The big question mark really is, would you pay $1,300 for a lens like this? Well, considering that you can get all the way to 400 mm with it, an important reach for wildlife photography particularly, actually, I'd probably consider it. The lens really does work so well, and while you can certainly get sharper optics than this, there's nothing else nearly as convenient. It's great to play with a lens that makes photography more simple and fun like this, so yes, I'm impressed, and it comes recommended. Patreon in the description below. Support the channel and get all kinds of bonus content. Check it out now. Au revoir et à bientôt.